I never really felt like I fit into any one group. I still don't. When I moved to New York, I got into the new wave punk rock scene, but I always felt very different from everyone else because my aesthetic is actually very much linked to California. You know that song, mm -hmm. The Only Surfer Boy in New York? I kind of felt like I related to that. Well, I was born in New York and moved to Miami, and then I moved to LA when I was in middle school. Just growing up the way I did, I couldn't relate to anyone. In LA, people would come to my house and be like so weird because this is the kind of environment that I've always grown up in. She was embarrassed for a while. Yeah. At a certain age. I definitely grew out of that, but. Because um, we weren't normal. Mm -hmm. Kids want to be normal. Just growing up with like both of my parents, my life has never been like the norm. How I feel when I act and when I can truly just get all the shit that blocks us in our life is just incredible. It's hard to connect to people today. For me, that's what acting does as well. You can really connect to people and feel <coughs> like, you know, you might live in them and they might live in you. I came to New York in 1978, then a couple weeks after arriving, I went to the store Fiorucci. Within a few months, I was having my first show, which was at Fiorucci. A lot of my first experiences with uh, showing art was in nightclubs. You know, when I got here, it wasn't like, you know, you went to the galleries, they weren't going to, like, give you a show or anything. So we just started putting on our own shows. Nightclubs were, like, basically how everybody lived. And when, you know, the 70s hit and bright colors and tail fins and rocket shapes are no longer in vogue, everything became boxy and beige and boring. I was like, this sucks. I'm not going to just stick with what they're giving me. I'm going to create my own fantasy. This is my mother's um, vintage Alaya, and I heard she's given me a lot of my favorite stuff. She's like a very nature, also based Brazilian Amazonian goddess. I do a lot of silk screen on the canvas and I have the screens going and I don't like to just wash them when I still have ink on them so I'll throw a t-shirt and screen on. This is my favorite sweater in the world. I've worn it, I just, especially in the winter, I mean it's cashmere and I've worn it just so much. I don't think I've ever washed it. In the 70s, you'd find 50s clothes in the garbage and I still have a lot of the stuff that I found in the garbage from the 70s uh, which, you know, like, you know, like shark skin suits, like real new wave. So we, we all got our new wave uh, attire from the garbage. This is a Keith Haring t-shirt. It's really, I love Keith and I love this one. You know, I met Keith when I moved to New York almost the first week, second week. I was going to SBA. When I first saw him before I met him, uh, I was just in school and walking in I heard this Devo music and I was really into Devo. And I was like, oh, where's that Devo music coming from? And I looked and I saw Keith was painting these black lines to the beat of the music. And he had taken this room and was painting the entire room. And he had painted himself into a corner, ceiling the walls. And he was just like doing this like dance just by himself. And I just sat there looking and I'm like, he's been gone over 20 years already and it's still you know I still feel he's such a big part of my life every day. I'm working on a documentary film about my dad. I've been filming a lot and it's it's just a really exciting and obviously personal project for me. He's my dad so I, I know him really well and honestly I don't know anyone as um, incredibly passionate and just so like lives his life as art and to me that's like the most beautiful thing and I want to be more like that. No, I think New York back then, I have this weird nostalgia that I, but I never was there, but I've heard so many stories and I've seen things and you know I've met a lot of his friends who are still here and the people who aren't alive I've just kind of like, they're still in me because I've, I've watched videos of them and I've heard stories so I, I long for this creative community. We all sometimes feel alone, and I think that it's kind of a really important to, to realize that we're not alone in the end, that we're all in the same boat. Everybody is worthy of mm -hmm. respect, 
you're a janitor, you're a waitress, you're a conductor, you know, we'll help the president, whatever. Every single person I see has a story. You're using art, and I like to say that elevates the mundane. I just don't understand why people, in general, just take what they're given. Because it's like, you know, that's so boring. We don't have to do that. Nobody has to do that. Everyone has the power to make their world the way they want it.